What if one day you picked up your phone and there were no apps, no icons, no folders, no endless scrolling, just a conversation. The days of the app store may be numbered. With AI-driven interactions, we're on the dawn of a new era where we no longer have to navigate digital experiences, but simply live in them. In 2007, when Steve Jobs introduced the iPhone, the world didn't just see a new phone. We witnessed a revolution in personal computing, a radical shift in how we would connect with our devices, changing the very way we live and work. The App Store would follow, and with it, the explosion of apps that now dominate our screens. Fast forward to today, more than 2.5 million apps are available in the App Store alone. Now imagine for a moment, the next leap in this journey is one where we no longer have to open apps at all. Or worse, we no longer need apps at all. Let's examine some facts. Over 85% of smartphone users interact with just 10 apps or fewer. Yet most users spend 80% of their time on just 5 apps. This isn't the future we want to embrace. Instead, I'd like to envision a future where apps give way to something more intuitive, something that feels more natural. I believe this is a shift we can look forward to, where one day we can pick up our phone and there will be no apps, no icons, no folders, no endless scrolling. We'll be able simply to have a conversation with our device and have a conversation with the world regarding what we want and how we want to experience it. Imagine instead of scrolling through endless apps, you simply talk to your device and instead of checking the weather app, you ask, what's the weather today? Instead of opening a ride sharing app, you say, find me a ride. We're not just talking about the future of smartphones. This is the future of how we'll interact with all devices and it's already beginning. The earliest computers weren't made for people like you and me, they were made for engineers. If you wanted a computer to do something in the 1940s or 50s, you literally had to feed it stacks of punch cards, literal paper instructions line by line. It was slow, tedious, unforgiving. <laughs> you had to adapt to the machine. By the 1970s and 80s, things improved. Well, sort of. We got command lines, that little blinking cursor on a black screen. Now you could type your instructions directly. It was faster, but still not for the average user. We needed to speak the machine's language, memorizing commands, syntax, all of it. The barrier was high. Then came the revolution, the graphical user interface. GUIs. You can now see folders, windows, icons. Suddenly, the computer world opened up to more than just experts. Xerox planted the seeds and Apple made it mainstream. Drag and drop became the new command line. This was the 1980s and 1990s. And then came the internet. Web interfaces in the late 1990s and early 2000s changed everything again. Now, the computer wasn't just a tool, it was a gateway. Search engines, email, shopping, social media, you basically clicked your way through the world. And then, in 2008, something small but powerful, the iPhone. And suddenly, our lives were built around apps, little icons that did one thing each. A ride, a meal, a date, a weather update. There's an app for that. Millions of them, personalized, portable utilities. And by the 2010s, the voices started creeping in. Siri launched in 2011, Alexa came in 2014, and for the first time, you could speak and expect a response. The dream of talking to machines like we'd always imagined started to feel real, but it was still clunky. Commands, not conversations. And we are right at the edge of something entirely new. What's coming next isn't just smart voice assistants, it's a shift in the entire interface where conversation becomes the operating system. It started with one promise. There's an app for that. In 2008, the App Store didn't just launch, it redefined how we interacted with the internet and technology. Suddenly, everyone with a phone could access tools for travel, health, money, or entertainment. Apps weren't just software, they were interfaces, gateways to the real world. This was the App Store Gold Rush, 2008 to 2015, a time when apps felt like superpowers. The right icon could unlock freedom, flexibility, even financial independence. Uber didn't just reinvent transportation. It changed how we accessed it. Through a single tap, Instagram didn't reinvent photography. It created a shortcut to sharing and validation. Robinhood didn't disrupt Wall Street's mechanics. It simply flattened them into an interface that the average person could swipe through. The value wasn't in the service, it was in the access, and that's what apps gave us. The illusion of control delivered in pixels. But over time, something changed. Today, 
The average smartphone user spends over four hours a day inside apps. But those hours, they're not spread across discovery and innovation. They're funneled into the same five silos. YouTube, TikTok, WhatsApp, Instagram, Gmail. You're not exploring, you're looping. And here's the problem. When everything becomes an app, every experience starts to feel the same. Tap, wait, swipe, repeat. Eventually, that interface stops feeling magical and starts feeling mechanical. That's the moment we're in now. Not the rise of apps, but in their slow decline. Clubhouse exploded in 2020, an audio-first social app. Downloads peaked at 9.6 million in February 2021. Two years later, monthly active users had dropped by over 70%. Why? Because in the app economy, virality doesn't guarantee longevity. If users don't build new habits, apps die. Apple's own Vision Pro isn't built around apps, it's built around environments and intent-driven interactions. No grid of icons, no home screen addiction. That's not an accident, it's a sign. The Vision Pro represents the future of interfaces, where instead of tapping through apps, you'll interact with the environment around you in three-dimensional space. The app era isn't ending, not with a bang, but with a fade, because the model we've relied on for over a decade, download, tap, and repeat, can't keep up with how we want to interact anymore. Apps are static, but users are dynamic. This series is about why that's happening and what's replacing the app economy altogether. We've all felt it, the constant barrage of notifications, the never-ending updates, the sheer volume of apps demanding our attention. But this isn't just a personal frustration. It's an industry-wide problem. Facebook has been reported to have over 2.91 billion active monthly users. Yet even with such a large user base, many report feeling overwhelmed by the sheer number of features, notifications, and content vying for their attention. It's no longer just a social network. It's a content hub, a marketplace, a messaging app, all rolled into one. For most users, navigating Facebook can feel more like a chaotic maze than a tool for communication. And it's not just Facebook. 90% of the time spent on mobile phones is now spent on just a handful of apps. Yet we still face the daily struggle of deciding which ones to engage with. All these apps are making people feel overwhelmed and causing decision fatigue. Apps were designed to simplify our lives, but now each one demands its own space, attention, and constant updates. The more apps we add, the more mental load we take on without realizing it. The average user has over 40 apps installed, but only engages with nine apps daily. And even within those nine apps, users still find themselves bouncing from one to the next, unable to focus due to the constant influx of information and updates. Netflix's co-founder, Reed Hastings, has said, their biggest competition isn't HBO or YouTube, it's your sleep. Imagine how these apps aren't just aggressively fighting for screen time. They're fighting for your time, in fact, your life. We're constantly pulled in multiple directions, each app with its own demand for our attention. And that constant battle for attention is exactly why this old app model is wearing us out. Don't get me started on logins. With the endless array of apps, we now juggle countless accounts, passwords, and two-factor authentications just to get through the day. The truth is that apps are no longer as helpful as they once were. They've become overcomplicated, fragmented systems that slow us down rather than speeding us up. And now we're beginning to see the shift, move away from the app-based silos and toward conversational AI that allows us to interact with our devices in a seamlessly intuitive way. Instead of managing multiple apps, imagine being able to simply ask your device to do everything you need without diving into each app individually. Instead of juggling a dozen different apps for basic tasks, we're now moving toward one unified experience where your needs are handled in a more intuitive and streamlined way. We're seeing early stages of this already. AI-powered assistants like Siri, Alexa, and Google Assistant have already started to take over more of our daily interactions, letting us perform tasks without needing to dive into each of those apps independently. And that's just the beginning. Imagine a future where you no longer need apps at all, so that your devices understand you, 